welcome to this Gold BGJ Instructional on attacking the turtle fundamentals. I'm going to be just going over a bunch of different ways on how to take the back against the turtle. Not getting into any kind of submissions or anything like that, but my name is Roy Van Fleet with RVV BGJ and this is my training partner Kevin Wong. And turtle is something that you're going to have to be dealing with when you're doing jiu-jitsu, whether you like it or not, because any time that you are close to solidifying a guard pass, our opponent will sometimes be looking to turtle to either shut down your ability to secure points when it's in a jiu-jitsu competition setting, or stopping you from being able to pin their shoulders and their hips flat to the mat and cutting down all, uh, all their mobility. So going to turtle is a very legit position to move to. However, a lot of people also spend way too much time there. And so I'm gonna show you ways that we're gonna be able to look at the turtle position and just basically uh, mess up their alignment and always take their back and always win in this position because turtle is not a good position for your opponent to sit in and we want to punish them for it. So I hope you guys enjoy the instructional. In the next two videos, I'm going to talk to you about our positioning of our legs when we're going to be attacking the turtle as well as the positioning of our arms controlling our opponent's upper body. There are two main positioning for our legs. Kevin's in turtle, facing towards, oh, out a little bit. I'm either going to have my near knee, near leg, right up against his leg here, controlling, or I'm going to have a mirrored leg here where I'm going to have my knee up beside his knee, and I can either be either sitting down on my hip, or I can have my knee obviously wedged in, in front of his knee, which would be the better case scenario, but either two are very effective. This is typically where we're going to end up as a position when we circled around, something like if we're going from front headlock control, and then from here, turning in, I'm always gonna have my left hip to his right hip. What my goal is from here, is to be able to create driving force pushing into my opponent. That's what this leg is able to do from being on the outside. This stops uh, Kevin from being able to perform a, a strong Gramby from here. If Kevin starts to try and Gramby, what he's doing is generating base from his left leg to lift his hips and drive this direction. I'm able to now oppose that with a direct opposing force vector this direction. So as Kevin tries to drive into me, I'm able to drive off this foot and put weight with my hips into his body. And if he starts putting his hand on the mat to try and increase force, this is going to allow me the ability to start attacking to chokes or establishing lever-based rotation control like getting motorcycle grips. The problem with this is that it keeps me farther away to the side of Kevin. And so if Kevin was to start turning away from me and dropping over his left shoulder, it's harder for me to be able to follow him at this point. So now the vice versa of that is going to be me now here with a mirrored leg, dead toes, knee to knee, and my calf running along his calf. This foot now is going to be in base. And I'll show you another, another angle in a second. What this allows me to do is now create a bit of a a bit of a pull, but more so being able to push off in this direction, which is going to be the dead angle of his base, which is going to allow things like the sprawl ride, where we're going to be able to pull our opponent out of base. It also brings the right side of my hip to the right side of Kevin's hip, and so now my ability to be able to stay on top and move with him, that if he now drops away from me, I'm going to be able to follow him, continuing momentum, and stay connected to his back. I much prefer, personally, attacking with this leg uh, mirrored to uh, my opponent's leg, because this allows me better control to be able to take the back. However, you need to know how to do both and be able to change between the positions, because if I'm here, and if Kevin starts to grab me and I respond a bit late, by switching my base, I'll be able to drive Kevin back over and solidify at least a top position, even if I start to lose uh, the ability to control the back. People love this kind of control with the lead knee here because it's also going to give us the ability to start leading and driving our knee and to separate to start creating openings that we're going to be able to start attacking, especially crucifix and going through this stuff. So if we started looking at an instructional more for submissions against the turtle, then that's going to be leading with that knee is going to give you many more opportunities to be able to start separating the arms, the elbows away from the knees and being able to attack the neck. Mostly going to be focusing on mirroring our right knee and right leg to our opponent's right leg. That's going to give us more opportunities to be able to transition to the back. The first thing we're going to look at is 
our opponent's alignment within turtle and what their goals are. Like what is going to be like their main defensive movements that they're using. Because it's really important to recognize if the turtle position is legitimate. Because if your opponent is just posted out with their hands, they're not going to be defending their neck very well. But if you don't focus on that, or if you don't pick up that one detail, you're going to tunnel vision on trying to pull your opponent out of base. And you're going to have a very difficult time because they always have very wide posts and you're gonna miss opportunities. So, when Kevin turns into turtle, he's going to be, usually gonna be dead toes, so that he's gonna be able to lower his center of gravity to try and get his hips closer to his heels. He's gonna be keeping his elbows on the inside of his knees, because obviously with me being able to use my entire body weight in gravity, if his elbows are on the other side, it's way too easy for me to separate. He needs to keep this knee elbow connection, and he needs to have his hands up here protecting uh, any attempts for me trying to choke him. Usually, because we're always going to be attacking with this side and forming a seatbelt connection this way with an underhook on the far shoulder and the arm coming over top of the shoulder on the near side, he's got to really be protecting this neck. So this is going to be somebody in a proper turtle. If he's dead toes, this is for lowering center of gravity, not for generating base. So I'm not too worried about Kevin being able to drive up right now. If he drives off the uh, tops of his feet to lift his hips right now, he can do that, but it's not going to be as explosive as if he goes live toes now, and now his ability that even if I lay on him a little bit, if he performs a Grammy over his right shoulder, perform a half Grammy, he's able to actually disrupt my center of gravity and start pushing me out of the way. So there's going to be a part of just figuring out where your opponent is in the stage of their turtle defense. Some people, like good turtle players, aren't using turtle as a position itself. They're going to be just moving into it for, as like a placeholder within positions and then continuing that momentum. So if they stay here, we're going to be able to start breaking them down. What I need to be worried about is trying to control his hips as well as his upper body. Because in order for Kevin to be able to move, he's going to be generating force with his legs, lifting his hips up in any kind of way. If Kevin just drives his hips up a little bit like this, just like that, that's going to be starting the momentum for his movements of, say, like a half grammy like he just did. If I was to put all my weight on his shoulders, then obviously he can move his hips quite easily. And if he was to perform a half grammy right now, I'm going to be getting disrupted quite easily. And if I focus too much on putting weight here on his hips, then it's going to be easy for him to be able to possibly just stand up, but he's going to be able to move his head away from me, falling down onto his left side. So here, and being able to just get back to a seated position. So we're going to need to try and find a way that we can float between the two, keeping control so that we're always, we're either going to be able to stop our opponent from moving entirely, or we're going to be able to control the speed of which that they can move. So make sure that your opponent is actually here in proper turtle. Like I talked about, when we're looking at things like here, Kevin doesn't have the best base. And so from just an exaggerated perspective, if I was to grab him and be able to pull him over, I potentially could. Obviously not with that technique, but I'll show you guys how to do it properly. If Kevin posts his hands out really wide to his right side, I'm gonna try and pull him, but there's no way I'm gonna be able to because he has a post here at a 45 degree angle to absorb any force that I can generate. And so white belts will just be freaking out here wondering why they're unable to get this to work. And then the person on bottom is gonna be building the false positive thinking that this is a really good idea, when the reality is this allows me to form my seatbelt connection or immediately start looking for rear naked chokes or any kind of gi chokes. So make sure your opponent is keeping in the arms in tight, defending the neck, elbows in between the knees like this. So that I can't move Kevin's legs, but I could move the arms. His arms are protected by his legs. If his arm is on the outside like this, one, you can see the space that just starts to get opened up right here beside Kevin makes it way too easy for me to start inserting my arms, but at the same time, it makes it way too easy for me to now get my knee in to start separating that knee elbow connection, creating vulnerability in his alignment. So that's the turtle. Your opponent is on their knees and on their elbows. This allows them to keep their hips up in the air, and so that now they're going to be able to have space that they can withdraw into to create momentum to be able to shift their center of gravity, whether it's them turning away from you or turning into you. And we're going to start going over the different ways of how we can shut that down. All right, let's take a look at how we're going to be controlling the upper body. Because 
I'm assuming, hopefully you guys have watched the back control fundamentals instructional at minimum for what I've done, because if you don't know how to control the back, then all the stuff I'm showing you of how to get here or how to get there isn't going to really help you because you're just going to lose the control immediately. So we need seatbelt control so that we're able to maintain rotational control of our opponent. It doesn't have to be seatbelt control, but I need to have some ability to either stop Kevin from entirely being able to turn or being able to slow him down significantly so I have time to react. So the best kind of control at first is going to be us being able to solidify a seatbelt connection where my arm is going to go over and underneath the far shoulder and then this arm is going to go over top of his shoulder I'm going to form a seatbelt connection where my bottom hand, so if Kevin you just posture up, where my bottom hand is going to cover over top of the killing hand as I talked about in the other instructionals because this is the hand that's going to be choking in some variation. This hand doesn't have that ability. I'm getting this control here. What I want to do is keep this control scheme here in the center of the chest because I need to have the ability to control him while also being in control of my center of gravity. If I try and hide the killing hand by bringing my motorcycle gripping hand or the underhooking side way too far, I have to shift my center of gravity significantly on top of Kevin right now. And now I become unstable. And if he drops over his left shoulder right now, I'm going to potentially get reversed. So by forming the seatbelt connection here in the center of his chest, it can allow me to still be able to keep my center of gravity off the side here, never putting your center of gravity on top of your opponent like this. I can also get that seatbelt control here where I'm leading with my left knee. Now, depending on how tight your opponent is, you're not going to be able to establish that seatbelt connection. Whether his hand is right here stopping my right hand from being able to get over to his chest, or his knee elbow connection is super tight here that stops me from being able to, if you just turn, stops me from being able to get my hand in here in a way that's going to make sense. So the other kind of control we're going to look at is having our arm punching down to the ground, trying to access the lever to the inside of Kevin's knee. So I'm not just punching down here, I'm not just punching down at his hip, I'm going to punch down and I'm going to look to, I can use like the palm of my hand out like this, you can use a grip on the key or you can just make a fist, that's typically what I do, but we're just looking to be able to create some extension here. What this is going to start creating is the ability to create a spiral ride where I'm going to be able to move Kevin's hips around in an arcing direction. It also gives me some control that if Kevin starts to try and drop his left shoulder, if he can't withdraw his left knee in as well, like this, if he brings his left knee in and falls like this, now he can drop away, now he can start to regard. If I can't control his upper body from rotating, like I could say from a seat belt, if I have a strong seat belt connection here and Kevin starts trying to drop that left shoulder, see how he can't really drop it any further. I have rotational control of his body. If I can't control the upper body, I need to make sure I have really strong control of that lower body, so I punch and I control at the end of the lever, so as he tries to drop that shoulder, he can drop the left shoulder, but we can see how he's unable to have his hips follow. Keep trying to move. He just ends up breaking his posture. This is going to give me time to attack, maybe even submissions at this point because his alignment's broken, or at least at the very minimum slow him down so that if he tries to get that knee through and he does, I have the ability to start making sure I'm landing in a dominant position. As I talked about, we want to make sure that we're controlling the upper and lower bodies here. So if I'm controlling up here with my seatbelt, I have connection with my chest to his back, but I'm going to be sitting back. I'm not going to be here trying to get my ear next to Kevin's like we would with standard back control. I'm going to be here floating more around his shoulder blade area. And I'm going to be making sure that my hips are sitting heavy on top of his. Because if I sit up like this and Kevin all of a sudden just like broncos up his hips, I'm going to get knocked forward. But if I can constantly keep some weight heavy on Kevin back here where I'm almost sprawling and starting to lift my knee off the mat here, depending on how much you think your opponent's going to be moving, instead of doing this where my knee's on the ground entirely, I could choose to opt to have my hips sitting a little more heavy. So now if Kevin tries to move and lift his hips, it's going to take a lot more energy if that slows him down. Same as I go here to that spiral ride where I'm punching my arm down to the inside of his knee, I'm still making sure I'm really riding down on his hips but keeping my chest forward because if I just sit back like this, then Kevin's just going to posture up and sit back to, to guard. 
We need to make sure that we have the ability to control our opponent from being able to turn left or right. Now, for me personally, I'd much rather Kevin be turning over his right shoulder and performing grandies or trying to do this because that at least keeps his back facing me. If his back is facing me, I have the ability to take it. If he falls over the other shoulder, his back becomes a further distance away from me. Life becomes more difficult. So what we need to do is think about ways that we can either create strong pushes down on this shoulder so that he's unable to withdraw it away, but more than likely, the stronger outcome is going to be stopping this shoulder from withdrawing. And so if he starts dropping that left shoulder, where does it go? It drops down. So if I can create a pulling motion upwards, I'm going to be able to resist that. If we got a motorcycle grip, so now we're going to start looking at lever-based or proxy-based controls. Lever-based control to his shoulder. If I'm pulling up on this arm and he tries to drop that shoulder, even if he drops completely sprawling out and trying to turn, all that ends up happening is he kind of gets flattened out. If I can, say, grab the lapel here, and even say from an exaggerated perspective, I pull this gi out and I'm pulling it like this, this gives me the ability that if I stood up and yanked it, see how I can pull that shoulder. If I can get this grip, and in a more realistic context, keep my weight back on his hips while creating a strong pull here, uh, so that uh, my hand is more kind of wrenching up into his shoulder and armpit, even with this hand free now, if Kevin tries to drop that shoulder, I'm not worried about it. It's going to be very difficult. And if he does really go for it, I'm able to at least make sure I stay in side control. And with that control, I might even be able to start pulling him back and forcing it. So proxy-based control is us using the gi so that we're able to use a tool to be able to exert control over our opponent. This seatbelt is one of the best, especially when it comes to a fundamental level when you're first learning control over your opponent. But it makes it hard for us to move our opponent when we have direct rotational control. When we start looking at lever-based rotational control, like punching our hand down for that spiral ride control down at the knee, or looking at ways of controlling motorcycle grips, or even using the gi to get control over the shoulder, we're going to be able to have an easier time moving our opponent. I'm going to try and keep this more focused on just the direct rotational control, which is going to be looking at the seat belt and a bit of the spiral ride. And then obviously, if we were to look at more advanced stuff in the future, then we're going to be starting to focus more on lever-based stuff. So make sure that you feel comfortable with your seat belt control. If you haven't watched the back control fundamentals on this website, then please review that material so you understand this, so that you're going to be able to be more effective at taking the back. But once you've worked really hard to get there, you're going to ensure that you can hold it forever. All right, one last video before we start getting into the actual back control. You are attacking the turtle, you are on top, and it is so important that you stay on top. I cannot say this enough, do not get greedy and chase for back control after you're just shit in the bed and losing everything and then risking ending up on bottom. I'm gonna show you ways that we can chase the back and follow with the momentum, but the most important thing is to know when to bail out and how to bail out. Like I talked about when we were talking about leg positioning, if I have this leg position, it's going to be extremely difficult for me to follow the back. If I have this and Kevin starts to drop his left side of his body and I try to follow, I risk possibly losing everything if I don't have the proper upper body control and I move a little bit too late. If he drives into me, by trying to like half grab me, I'm fine here. I'm going to be able to start driving. If you feel like you're getting overwhelmed as your opponent is starting to half grab me, we just need to keep moving around. You just have to understand where that direction is that your opponent's driving. If you feel like you're losing this battle, whereas Kevin is starting to half grab me and drive into me, that if I stayed here and he half grab me, I might end up getting back into a guard. That's not the end of the world because we're still on top, but. Especially if you had almost passed your opponent's guard and they went to turtle to stop you from solidifying the passing and the points, we don't want to end up back in guard. Otherwise, they were able to implement their, uh, their game plan effectively. So here, as he starts to half grab me, I'm just going to keep walking around um, past his legs. Making sure the whole time that I have effective base and I'm really driving into Kevin because if I'm not driving into him, he's going to move quickly and he's going to be able to knock me over. But if I can drive into him and slow him down, so as he has to work for this while I'm still controlling the upper body as best I can, he keeps driving, trying to half grab me, 
I'm able to start killing the momentum of his hips. That's not as big of a problem. The bigger problem is him turning away. As he turns away, it's important that we just let go of our opponent, no longer trying to stay attached. So if we're able to pace with our hands to make sure that we stay on top, and we're gonna to look to cut our knees up towards our opponent's head. As Kevin drops to his left shoulder, his left knee is gonna come through this space as his hips drop, and it's gonna to look to start retaining guard. I'm either gonna get pulled far away from him and possibly reverse, or as he drops, his knee starts coming in here, and he's going to end up getting me here. And even in this situation, my center of gravity is starting to get moved. So I, either I'm going to end up back in guard, or even worse, reversed or swept. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and beat that knee by landing higher up in his chest. So as I'm here, I got the seat belt, or I'm trying to do like the spiral ride, I got a motorcycle grip. As he starts to drop that shoulder, I'm letting go, and I'm performing a baseball slide where I'm bringing my knee up to his shoulder. Thinking I was going to kind of bring this knee up high enough that he could use this as a pillow. I need to cut that, the cut up high so that my hips are blocking his leg, eliminating any space, any ability for him to properly frame me to create space himself. All I'm doing is opening up my arms, posting, and then my near leg is cutting through like this to move up into side control. Here, he starts to drop that shoulder. Bringing this in. His elbow might be in nice and tight, that's fine. My job right now is just to shut down his legs. So now if he tries to bring his legs in, I'm able to close my elbow to his hips. He can't move. I can start looking at cross face or bringing this elbow out to start getting into the usual Kazuri Kazukatami, kind of like broken scarf hold position. Turn, right? Here I'm in this position, Kevin starts to turn. This landing here, side control. Very easy motion. It's not what we want, so it's, it's always going to be a little bit disappointing in that sense. Turn around 180. But it's the better play to make. Here, Kevin starts to drop. Landing here. Here, my elbow is closed, so that he's unable to keep hipping away. And I'm able to start looking to cross face him immediately, securing that position, and then knee ride, mount. We'll find a way to get to the back again. It's just going to take us a little more steps because we've lost a range battle. But it's really important that when you start losing a range battle, that you don't just keep charging ahead like an idiot. You're losing a battle. It's time to perform a tactical retreat and not chase that anymore so you can regroup yourself to then continue and then hopefully win the war later on. So that's how we refer to it. It's a range battle and a tactical retreat. You are failing to control the back at this point. Bail out and make sure that you stay on top. All right, so the first back attack that we're gonna look at for taking our opponent's back is the ankle lever control. I showed this move already in the taking the back instructional on this website with Gold BGJ and a way to stop our opponent from moving up into turtle, but it's also a great move when our opponent has also solidified turtle position. I'm gonna just quickly go through this. If you want more details, then just check out the taking uh, the back instructional on the website. But this is one of our best moves to use when we already have seat belt control. Once I have the actual seat belt, because I'm connected to them, I don't have the ability to create very much momentum. And so the moves, like it's not wrong, but me just trying to take like my knees and drop in and pull them out of base, it can work. But especially if your opponent's good or even slightly bigger than you and they can open up their knees up quite a bit here, me trying to make this switch of momentum <clears throat> and pull them, it's going to be extremely difficult to do so. So what we look to do from here, if we just turn around completely, is I need to start trying to knock his hips forward. So as I'm starting to drop down to my hip here, I'm bringing my knee underneath his butt, and I'm going to look to bump him forward so that I can expose his heel and start to catch this. By having my knee placed in front of his knee, I'm going to create that ratchet lever where I'm going to be able to hook this and start to rotate him so that then I can start to insert this hook and then I just have to make sure to put this other hook in or use the Popovich to open them up and put that in, which was covered in the uh, back control fundamentals. The two biggest things here that can help is the kickstand of taking my knee here and driving into Kevin's hip or like lower butt here so that I can keep knocking him forward here. Notice how his hips are trying to sit down here by his feet. If I'm able to lift this up, 
and create, create, uh, keep creating space makes it easier to attack his leg, but it also takes away his potential energy that with his hips already up here, that's that much less range of motion he can use to generate momentum. So if he tries to ground me from here, he's much more weak versus when it's hit the lower. The other thing that can really help us is trying to block this elbow because now he's already in the turtle position. So as I have this seatbelt control, what I can do is either by my legs kind of drop over his shoulder here to then kind of start clubbing with my forearm here at his bicep to just bring his elbow in to make him have less profile in this direction. If his elbow can open out like this, there's going to be a fine line between him creating too much space, but also this is going to make it difficult to move him. I can also just let go and check the bicep. By me starting to drive him forward and pull his elbow in, if I can drop him down to the shoulder, he's going to be much more vulnerable. From here now, I can hook his leg and start to open this up to insert that hook. And I just have to make sure to make, make sure that I have gotten proper seatbelt control on the strong side again. So let's check here. So now he's got this control. I'm trying to knock him forward. I'm trying to drop him down to that shoulder. I'm creating a block here at his knee. I can't pull him any further. I hook that ankle to start pulling him on top of me to kick my knee through and put that hook in. Very strong option where we're using our opposed leg as a lever so that we're going to be able to create a little more movement and a little more space to be able to get our hook in. The next move is the spiral ride. The spiral ride is a great option for when we are not able to get our hands connected with the seat ball control, either because our opponent has really strong knee elbow connection or is hand fighting us up by the chin, as they should be. This is typically one of my go-tos. So what we're doing, as I talked about in the control with our arms, is I'm looking at taking this arm and punching it down to the ground so that I'm accessing his leg as a lever down by his knee. I'm not trying to just push him here at the hip. I'm down here at the knee, so I'm gonna be able to start accessing this as a lever to open him up. What I need to be doing is using my mirrored leg here to be blocking his knee here. What this is gonna do is allow me to use my left leg to create a push to pull him out this direction, as well as stopping him from being able to adjust his post actively. This arm, could be connected to like the bicep here. Our job is to still try and take this arm and block it so we're able to drop our opponent down onto their shoulder because this is gonna create a lot more vulnerability. My goal with this is to create a spiral motion. Our opponent and just anyone in general with regardless of what we're looking at when it comes to combat, it's much easier for us to deal with anything that comes at us in one direction. However, if we can create multi-directional movements, it becomes much harder for the human body to respond. So if Kevin has, like even if I blocked his base here and I just try and pull him to the side and he just leans his center gravity a bit to the side, it's very difficult for me to do anything. However, if I can create kind of like a J-shaped motion where I'm pulling him to the side but then also up, it can be a lot easier for me to be able to disrupt his base and take control of his center of gravity. So what we're looking at doing is not just pulling our opponent to the side, but looking to start creating a circular motion where I'm going to be leaning forward and clubbing down in his bicep to block it, trying to drop to his shoulder, while I'm accessing his leg as a lever, while I'm also pushing off here. And what I'm trying to do is give him a slight pull to the point where he starts to tip. What I don't want to do from here is just keep pulling him end up here where I don't have either hook on his body and I might even risk him moving to this side and whether I chase the back from there or not it's not very good control. What I want to do is I want to start pulling him onto me and once I feel he hits a point where he can no longer recompose his base think of like a tree falling and someone yelling timber once the tree starts to break to a certain point it's going down no matter what. As Kevin starts to fall I move my hips backwards and allow him to fall into the space. He's really tight in the elbow connection. I can't get the seat belt, so I just choose to punch my arm down here. My leg is blocking his leg here. Here, his elbow is already in so tight that I'm not concerned. I'm just going to have this arm here. I can even use it for base. Here, posting my left leg in base, so I'm going to be able to drive and start pulling him back and to the side as I'm creating an angle. As he starts to fall, 
I continue to hit back here. Now I'm able to throw this hook in. The problem is, is that we don't have a low hook. So as I go this direction, we're here. Depending on how much he's leaned, I might be able to secure the seat belt and merely put my little hook in. Or we might have to look at bringing our foot all the way over so that we're able to block the hip so that I can kick this leg out. And just like we talked about resetting the back in the back control fundamentals, where I'm gonna be able to start generating base here to falling back and adjusting the pulling back to the weak side. As I've stressed before, if you haven't watched the fundamentals of back control, you're gonna have a hard time with these motions. Here, the side tight turtle, punching down at his knee, I'm blocking him here. This leg is in base, toes pointed that direction, knee up in the air. I'm gonna try and drop him down to his shoulder and create this pulling motion to drop here. See how he's landed in between my legs now. If we're able to turn this much, then I'm able to put both hooks in easily while also hitting them in the balls. Blocking, in base, driving, pulling them to the side. Over time, head straight to the camera. So try and create this arcing spiral direction. It's a great way to disrupt our opponent's base. If you feel like they are starting to try and recover from this, then we have the ability to always go back to that ankle control at any point. So make no mistake that whether you can get the control or not, especially say here where he's dropped his heels very close to his butt, or his butt close to his heels, if I can't get this, by creating this spiral ride motion here, if he starts trying to drive back into turtle at this point, it's going to create that space where now I have the hook of his leg. I'm going to be able to, at this point, start using that lever-based rotational control to start securing back control. So ankle, the, the uh, ankle lever control to be able to take somebody apart is usually one of the best ways of doing this. If you can't get in because your opponent's super tight, then look to use the spiral ride and then use the two together when your opponent starts resisting that motion. Don't ever try to attack with one move. We have to chain moves together to attack higher level jiu-jitsu practitioners. So the last two options we went over are great options for when somebody is either staying still or also when they start trying to grab you, turn their backs towards you. However, one of the best ways to try and escape turtle is to obviously turn your back far away from your opponent so you're making them travel a longer distance to try and get to that main goal. Here we're going to look at creating a following them and doing a barrel roll motion. As Kevin starts to drop his hip to the other side, the biggest problem is if his hip drops to that ground. If it lands there, he's now solid and secure and it's very hard to move him. What I'm going to try and do from this leg positioning, I have to be in this leg positioning with the mirrored leg, right leg to right leg, regardless if I have seatbelt control or I'm kind of going with the spiral rod control or any kind of lever based control, is I'm going to get my knee over here in time to create a fulcrum to rotate him over and continue that momentum. So as I'm here and Kevin starts dropping his hip, I'm dropping so that I can teeter-totter him over top of my knee and put the control of my hooks in. The biggest problem that people try and do from here, and it's not bad in the sense of just controlling the position, is that if I try and stop Kevin from here and he starts dropping his hip, if I try and do this, he's gonna eventually be able to either reverse me or force me to just kind of come up into a dominant position, which is not the end of the world, but back control is the end game. It's the best position we can have. So rather than trying to stop your opponent's movement, we need to follow them with control. And that's where the just proper seatbelt connection, or spiral ride, and keeping heavy hip pressure here. So as Kevin starts to try and turn away from me, it takes him a little bit of time. If I'm here and Kevin just blasts out like nothing, uh, I'm not doing this right. I'm not trying to stop him in this case, I'm just trying to slow him down so I can make sure that I'm on the other side waiting. So with Kevin not moving yet, what I'm looking to do is jump over to this side and basically bring my knee mirroring to his leg on this side. What this has done is that now as Kevin drops, 
he is now sitting on top of my leg. Depending on how long my knee is, you can see how my knee is now actually protruding out the other side. He's completely on top of me, which means that I have some control of his center of gravity. What I'm going to look to do from here, assuming I already still had my uh, seatbelt connection, but just for the purposes of talking to you, I'm able to put this hook in, and now by generating some base or at least carrying the momentum, I'm able to now just start to pull him on top of me and put the other hook in. We have to create this fulcrum, a pivot point, that we're able to rotate him over top. As I'm here, motorcycle control, he starts to drop that hip. I bring him over, and I put this hook in. My knee is still on the other side of his body, so now I'm able to hip out and start moving immediately into a rear naked choke if I wish. Just go a little 180 degrees. Um, a little bit forward. As I'm here and Kevin starts to move, rotating him through. My foot is already in base here, so I'm able to turn him and here stay on the weak side. Whether you rotate all the way through to the weak side or rotate even further to get to the strong side, depending on momentum, it becomes a choice because obviously there's momentum within this motion, but also it's going to be how well you control the back, what you choose, how you're going to reset and create different hip angles to make sure that you're falling to the side that you want. Ultimately, you're ending up on the back regardless, so this just, this takes some fast motion to be able to pull it off, but at the same time, make sure you're controlling the turtle properly and keeping heavy pressure on their hips so that you're controlling their motion and making them react slower. If we've established proper seatbelt connection, then that is our primary form of control with the back, which I talk about once again in the back control fundamentals. If we have seatbelt control, and only if we have seatbelt control, we can follow the back without hooks. And so, what we're gonna talk about with this, is from here, I have seatbelt connection, and as Kevin starts to drop his left shoulder, I'm just following him and landing like this. By me being here, let's just walk up a bit. By me landing like this, what I wanna do is make sure that my legs are far away from my opponent here. What this is gonna allow me to do is one, drive more shoulder pressure into Kevin's neck, breaking his posture. But more importantly, if I land here and he just reaches his right arm over top, uh, he could do this, but even worse is just bring your elbow like Yeah. Now he starts to shut down my ability to control his back, and he's gonna be able to just start moving his hips backwards. And I have back control still to an extent, but I'm very close to just losing this and having him solidifying like a twister side control. So land in base, knees up in the air, and keep your legs farther away from your opponent. But as I'm here and Kevin starts to roll, I'm going to roll over my shoulder and land and walk my hips away. What I'm going to do is keep my seatbelt connection. I can bring my elbow back a bit and I'm looking to drive my shoulder forward here so that I'm breaking his posture. Let's just walk out to the side here. Yeah. So as I'm here, I'm not like this where Kevin's in pretty good posture. What I'm looking at doing is bringing my shoulder from back here up behind the back of his neck so you can see how his chin is now folded down towards his chest. Even from here, if he starts bridging, trying to drive into me, I have my legs in base and I'm breaking his posture. If I'm like this and he starts to bridge and drive into me, it can create just a small problem, but honestly, if he lifts his hips at all right now, I'm just bringing myself underneath and taking his back. However, some guys will be able to take their head and grind it into your jaw like this and create issues where I'm not going to be able to take the back as well. So if I'm breaking the posture like this and he tries to bring his head into me and he tries to lift his hips in any meaningful way, all he's going to do is give up the back uh, completely. So what I want to do from here is I want to walk myself around and basically into our north-south position, belly down. From here, I'm walking my hips out and turning myself to here trying to find room with everything being super uh, close to me. One of the things I want to stop is his elbow from being able to make contact with the mat. If I'm weak like this and he can turn onto his side here and put his elbow in mat, now he's able to start generating base and everything becomes a lot more difficult. This arm is controlling and breaking his posture. This elbow is flaring so that if he tries to connect his elbow to the mat, I'm able to block him here while still having rotational control of his body. So if he tries to turn left or right, he can't. From here, what we look to do is then start to build ourselves up in the base 
and sit our opponent up to here into a seated position. Move in further away from my lanky ass. If I don't, if I was doing spiral wide control or something, as he starts to roll, I'm losing everything. Seat belt, where my hands are connected, center of his chest. He starts to roll. I roll. I land here. What I need to do is I need to walk my legs back. Let's just pull ourselves towards walking. Here, I walk myself out to this position. Now from here, to make this easier for me, I'm gonna to look to build up with my left elbow and my right leg. There's a lot of ways that, like you're gonna be able to find a way to get up here, but this is the most efficient way of making sure I keep proper base. If I'm here and I try and build up with just my left side, I don't really have anything to drive effectively into Kevin one direction. So here, this look gives me a post on my left side and a post on my right side. Here I'm able to build up and now from here with live toes and on my elbow, I'm gonna be able to lift my hips up further and bring my left knee up. From here, live toes. So my toes are curled into the mat. So that now this posture break is the key part here, guys. I'm taking my shoulder and driving to the back of Kevin's neck so he's gonna help me sit up like this because it's extremely uncomfortable. Keeping tight chest to back connection. If at any point I go like this, Kevin's gonna be able to just start escaping back control. So we are on our backs. We are looking to walk our hips away and turn up. As we get here, I'm now gonna build up with my left elbow and my right knee. So I turn myself, I'm gonna bring my knee out like this. And then with live toes, I'm gonna to look to build up here and then get to my other knee. Let's go completely the other direction. Here, Kevin starts to drop. I'm falling the back. And here, I'm walking myself out. Let's pull ourselves forward now. Here, to get myself into this position where I'm able to start driving forward into him. Here, this is where like bulldog chokes exist. I can't just go for like a rear naked choke right from here. But I'm looking to get myself into base to lift myself up. Driving his head forward, constantly breaking posture to get him into the seated position. The next two videos we're going to go over how we deal with our opponent's reactions in the seated position. So we're in the seated position. What we need to do is be able to react to whatever direction our opponent turns. Kevin is not going to usually turn to his right because that's turning to the strong side. If he starts turning to his right, it just allows me to move right into a very strong uh, seat belt, a strong side, or if he turns to turtle, puts me on the strong side attacking the turtle. What he wants to do is put me on the weak side attacking the turtle, which where there's weak side and strong side with back control when we're actually like laying down on our backs. In turtle, there's really just one good side and the other side is complete garbage. So if I'm here and Kevin starts to turn this direction, it ends up opening up my elbow away from my body and he's gonna be able to move to that space. So let's just turn here. So what I'm talking about is instead of having this control, we're talking about having this control where on the far side I'm going with the overhook and on the near side I'm going with the underhook. What this does is it opens up my elbow away from my body like this, which creates very weak structure, thus creating weak alignment in my body. It's also not stopping me from, uh, I'm not really stopping his shoulder from being able to duck through the space. So as I'm here, if Kevin starts to move his hips away from me, start to withdraw his head, it's actually very difficult for me to control him. It turns into like this schoolyard bully headlock stuff that we all learn is garbage from day one. We need to make sure that we have the control on the proper side. So what we need to do is we're going to need to move our hips to the other side of his body so that we can make sure that we're attacking turtle in the right position. So as I'm in this position here, this is bad. So what I need to do is I need to just generate base with my legs and I need to move my hips up and around him. So I need to immediately move to this side. Now I'm in the proper motion. This allows me now to close my elbows to my body and Kevin's body as well as controlling this shoulder so that now as Kevin tries to move, it's very difficult to do so. Now, going through that whole motion, Kevin performs the roll. I follow, I walk my hips out, I build myself up, I get him to a seated position. He is now going to turn to his left here, the underhooking side, 
So as we land here, I have to move myself to this side. Once again, he performs his rule. I follow the back. I walk my legs away. I'm breaking his posture. I build up with my left elbow and my right leg. I keep him moving forward. He's going to turn. I walk my hips back towards his legs and I move, himself, move myself around so I can go back to attacking the turtle as we've talked about. The heuristic that my instructor Rob Zanaki teaches is the arm that's going over top the killing arm is going to be as if he is putting on a seat belt, regardless if it's passenger or driver's side. So here, if I was to bring this arm here, regardless, Kevin is now going to be pulling a seat belt over top, putting it on here. So as he goes into a turtle position, as I'm here, I bring this arm over here like he's putting on the uh, seatbelt because I'm on the passenger side essentially. I'm on this side of his body. So here the seatbelt goes here. If I was on this side, it's now the driver's side and obviously we're talking North America. And so if we're talking like England, Australia, driving on the opposite side, then here you're gonna have to change it accordingly. But here now, if Kevin was putting on a seatbelt right now, put on the seatbelt, Kevin, driver's side, he's pulling it across this way, this arm, goes over top, connect the seat belt. So as soon as we got this, we have messed it up and we're in really bad positioning. So I have to make sure I'm just moving myself immediately to that proper side. So it becomes a drill that's easy to do where you're gonna have your opponent roll, just like Kevin and I were demonstrating, follow the back, build yourself up, have your opponent turn, and then make sure you recorrect it so that you're on the proper side and you'll be able to attack the turtle effectively. Next, we're going to talk about what to do when it comes to your opponent sitting still and stopping you from being able to get hooks. And we're going to go over how we can beat that. Okay, so now we have an opponent who isn't turning either way and is keeping a really tight knee elbow connection. If I'm here like this and Kevin's just staying here and defending himself, I'm going to have a hard time moving him from here. And so I'd rather put in my hooks. From here, it's going to be hard for me to just throw a leg over. That's going to be dependent on the length of your limbs relative to your opponent. Your flexibility depending on like see here where his elbow is on the inside of his knee I could certainly cut into that space with my lengthier frame and be able to throw a leg over like this to put the hook in it can work and I do it all the time however just make sure you're making an educated call on that because what I'm doing is I'm giving up my base for a moment and hoping that I'm gonna get that hook in if Kevin has really really tight knee elbow connection and I throw this leg over and I miss for a second we drop Kevin's now going to start moving his hips over top of my leg, and I'm now a battle is ensuing. I still have seatbelt connection, but everything became much more difficult. I would rather you guys not give up base before you have a hook already established. If the opponent has super weak knee elbow connection, and they're like this, then absolutely throw the leg over, cut it into that space. That's really easy to do so. But what we're going to look at is a really strong method that when Kevin's here and he's got a tight knee elbow connection, that instead of just throwing a leg over and kind of using the external rotation of my hip with a lever, is I'm going to just use the strong frame of my knee. So keep nice knee elbow connection, Kevin. To get that hook in, I can even start looking at getting a rear naked choke immediately. What I'm doing is adjusting my hip angle. In order to do that, if you've gone through the advanced back control module, then you're going to be knowing a little bit more about our cross body rotational control with motorcycle grips. If you've got more questions about it, watch that instructional, also on this website. Here, I'm controlling up at his hand or at his wrist with a motorcycle grip, no thumb curling over top, monkey grip. What I'm going to do is keep this hand in nice and tight, it's always threatening the choke, keeping his hand involved here. What I'm going to look to do is adjust my angle because I have this rotational control, lever-based rotational control, it allows me to walk and create an angle like this. This is going to allow me to bring my knee here so I can start bringing my knee in and driving it down to the mat. In order to get my leg in, I can't do it from here, so I'm going to continue to turn myself almost like I'm starting to turn to face him, which feels counterintuitive, but because I have the motorcycle grip, I still have the control. From here, I can now start to turn and put myself in with a proper hook. I can go back to my seatbelt if I want. I pull him to the strong side and put my second hook in. 
if you enjoy the uh, cross body rotational control, then we can absolutely just start taking this control here, breaking them down, and just looking at flattening them out right from here with the Khabib, or looking at now performing that chair sit motion here to start securing the back. But what we just want to make sure we're doing is using proper frames with our gravity and body weight so we're not going to be trying to muscle our point. Nice knee elbow connection here. It's always going to be easier to go to the strong side because this is going to be allowing us the opportunity to also attack with a choke. If I'm trying to bring this, arm, this leg in and he's really bringing his elbow over to block me, he's probably not defending the choke very well and I'll get that. Here, he has to keep defending this killing hand so that elbow stays a little bit further away. It's going to allow me to bring this knee in to then adjust my angle. However, you can absolutely do it on the other side. If you feel like you're hitting a wall, they're just able to create some sort of like um, structure, some alignment that's really making it difficult for you. It doesn't give us as many options for attacking, but if I'm here, I can absolutely just bring this leg over and start attacking this way. And as he's really responding here, I can go back and forth here, pulling myself back to the weak side in that case. So it depends on the side that you like to attack, but very strong way of dealing with that attitude where your opponent takes their ball and goes home, where they're just like, I am done fighting in a sense, and I'm just gonna sit here and go, ha, you can't get me now. This is a very bad mentality in fighting because obviously if we're looking at universal jiu-jitsu that would work with striking as well, that's not gonna be an answer. But we have to learn how to deal with it because unfortunately within the rule set of jiu-jitsu, people will be able to have success with this. And if we take too big of a risk and try and throw our leg over in some kind of way and break our own alignment doing so, they're gonna be able to capitalize on those bad movements or those poor choices that we make. So this is a very strong way of making sure that you can keep your base, break your opponent down, and if you really crapped the bed and made some mistakes, it's quite easy for you to stay on top by just bailing out of that position, making sure that you solidify side control. So very strong motion. I always enjoy it, and I hope you guys will too. Hey everyone, thank you for taking the time to go through this instructional with us. Once again, my name is Roy Van Fleet with RVV BGJ, and thank you for uh, your time helping me with this instructional, Kevin. Really appreciate it. Thank you to Gold BGJ, as always, for giving me the opportunity to show this stuff for you guys. This is Attacking the Turtle. This was just about looking at ways to take the back. Make sure as I've kind of referenced while we went through this uh, instructional, that you go through my other instructionals when it comes to back control. So back control basics and advanced back control is gonna be giving you a lot of options of how to control the position. If you guys don't know how to control the position, then all this work to get there is gonna be for nothing. So make sure you know how to control that position really well first, or at least at the same time as you're developing those skills, if you're a much newer white belt, as you're developing these skills of how to attack the turtle. So, Turtle is not a good position for the person that's in the turtle position. Have the confidence knowing that you are the dominant player in this battle and you're going to be able to use a lot of techniques to be able to break them down and do so confidently.